one of the things that, again, makes us feel so different than last summer as we start to emerge, hopefully, from this pandemic. So many cool events are returning to Metro Detroit. And one of those includes the Oddities and Curiosities Expo happening uh, tomorrow at the Suburban Collection Showplace in Novi. And to talk more about this, we want to bring in Michelle Casagiglio. Kazag How do I pronounce your last name? Casagiglio. It's <laughs> it's Casalio. Casalio. Hey, so tell us more about the expo. Yeah. Yeah, so the Oddities and Curiosities Expo, I like to say, is for lovers of the strange and unusual. We showcase vendors from all over the country with all things weird. So you can kind of think of it as a Halloween slash horror convention, except for we have even more. <laughs> and there's a little bit of weirdness in all of us. Yeah, for sure. And we think it's important to have something weird for everyone. So you can come to our show and find you know, skulls, bones, um, you know, a serious oddities collector can come to our show and find something. But then also anyone can come, you know, someone's like, oh, that sounds weird. I want to check it out. Or I love Halloween. So we try to have something a little weird for everyone. <laughs> and with that, Michelle, if we can ask, uh, this year is a little bit different because uh, we are still in the middle of a pandemic. How are things going to look this year? I think we have her video freezing up just there you froze up just a little bit so how are things going to be different this year well luckily things are slowly getting better so we still have some you know regulations in place for our show to make sure everyone still feels safe while attending um, we still leave really large you know our floor plan has a lot of space so everyone can social distance um, you know masks are still recommended but not required if you've been vaccinated um, you know luckily as we're progressing in the year a lot of our vendors are starting to travel again so we have vendors um, still even from all over the country at this show in Detroit. So has it been easier this year to get vendors because they haven't been out for so long? Um, sort of. At the beginning of the year, it was hard because a lot of people didn't want to travel. Uh, totally understandable. And so it was a little bit more difficult because we have a lot of people who travel with us. It's probably half and half. We have people from the local area that we're in and then we have people that are traveling from all over so as a, you know as the year has progressed it's gotten a lot easier um, but at the beginning it was a lot less vendors anyway so we never really had any problems it was just really adapting to the times <laughs> and we should note that uh, the expo is not just here in Detroit this travels you guys are going to be in several cities Yes, yes all over the country um, this year we scheduled 26 shows we went into it knowing we wouldn't have all of them just due to COVID and, you know, all the different state regulations. But um, I think we're going to end up having around 20. So I'm still happy with that just to be able to work again and get all these vendors working again. It's just, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> so not to put you on the spot or anything, but what is your favorite um, vendor or your favorite, uh, I, I guess, I, I don't even know what, to call them, <laughs> you know, your favorite uh, oddities. How's that? Well, you know, I love them all equally. <laughs> Such a good answer. But, um, you know, yeah, they're all great. <laughs> but personally, I am a collector of antiquities. And so I love myself even shopping through the vendors that have antiques, um, you know, so they'll, but not just like normal antiques, they're strange antiques, you know, so you can find old medical equipment, old funeral collectibles and stuff like that at our show. So personally, I love just rummaging through the antiques vendors. Um, I love art, I collect art too. So I love all the dark artists that are there, but I, I myself spend way too much money at the show. <laughs> and Michelle, I have to ask because uh, the name is perfect for this. Does it attract a good following? It does, um, you know, and kind of like I touched on earlier, 
someone that actually collects oddities or say they collect taxidermy or skulls, bones, dark art, they will come and they will for sure find something that, you know, they're, they've been looking forward to it. You know, there's like, there's nothing here that I can just go to and buy stuff like this. So we, we attract those people, the people who are actually into this. And then we attract literally anyone who's like, oh, it's weird. I'm going to go check it out, <laughs> you know? So, uh, so yeah, we have a, a great attendance everywhere we go. And I think it's just, uh, it peaks, it peaks your interest. You know, you're like, what am I going to find at this event? <laughs> Definitely some very unique items. And I think about this because I am a crazy Halloween person, but it's a little bit hard to think about Halloween in July. Uh, I'm into it. Halloween, I'm like, I, I live the life of Halloween. So, <laughs> you know, you can celebrate Halloween in July. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right, they have Christmas in July. Why not Halloween in July? Exactly. <laughs> So, and I also wonder, Michelle, in talking with the vendors, where do they find the items that, that they, uh, you know, sell to the public? Um, well, so if they're not handcrafted or like an artist, um, for example, we have some taxidermy vendors who buy old collections from auctions. So you may see... Uh, some taxidermy mounts from the 20s or 30s so you know we have a lot of our vendors do that they buy from auctions they go picking at antique stores every day i mean it takes a lot to run a business like that um, where you're just constantly you know replenishing and picking at different other businesses um but i mean my i i love some of the taxidermy vendors who just acquire really old collections from other taxidermy collectors so maybe you're buying a really cool antique bear mount from the 20s or something like that wow and so i wonder too uh, because of um we saw more so in the beginning of COVID, people with collections were selling and getting rid of a lot of their collections, especially as people kind of redo their homes. So has it opened up the market for some of these items uh, for people to buy or have more people just taken to trying to sell them themselves like online? I think she, I don't, Michelle, are, are, can you still hear us? So we should note that she is in the back of um, the uh, Suburban Collection Showplace, and I know as a person who has had to do countless live shots from there, yeah, it could be spotty, uh, wherever it is. Uh, I know mm -hmm. that we have some of those problems in some of our other bigger locations yes. as well. Uh, yeah. Michelle, can oh. you hear us now? Yes, I can now. Yeah, I was just like, oh, it's cutting out a little, but I think I got your question. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We understand. But I was wondering, uh, with COVID-19, some collectors got rid of their collections throughout the pandemic. Uh, but has that been the case or have they people tried to take to selling them to online? So what's the market like right now with the pandemic? Um, I, I think it was a little bit of a both, really. I mean, I, I have heard from some of our vendors that they acquired some great collections from people selling stuff during COVID, um, especially during the heights when people are out of work. And, you know, and, and basically these vendors, everyone was out of work for the most part. Everyone in our industry was. So, um, you know, it's kind of a give and take. People are like, well, I'm going to invest in this collection because eventually we'll get back to work. But, you know, it's just a really tough time for everyone, the, the seller of the collection and the buyer of the collection. So, yeah, I, I really think it was a little bit of both. Uh, again, the um, Oddities and Curiosity Expo is going to be happening uh, tomorrow from 10 until 6 at the Suburban Collection Showplace. Are, are tickets still available? Yes, um, we had a limited amount online just to help us keep track of our capacity. Um, we're still kind of operating off of a smaller capacity just to keep everyone feeling, feeling good. So you can buy tickets at the door, though, any time of the day. What's it been like for you to put this show together, not knowing where will we be, uh, like with restrictions? And they change from state to state as well. Yes. <laughs> yes, they're different everywhere we go. So it's, uh, it's 
been a struggle, but I don't care. I'm just so happy to be working again. <laughs> I have no complaints. <laughs> there you go. You're like, we'll hit the road. We'll deal with whatever we have to deal with and uh, continue on with the show. Well, it's great to have you guys back. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be back.